This video is an outreach of Unity Christian Church, 5255 Linden Road, Swartz Creek, Michigan. I am Brenda Etheridge, pastor and teacher. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, the mission of Unity Christian Church is to lead people to Jesus Christ and to encourage one another on our faith journey. Bible readings are from the New Revised Standard Version and commentary is from Feasting on the Word editing and music from the public domain by George Eldridge. Today, our subject is the Good Shepherd. Our scripture reading is from John chapter uh, 10, verses 11 through 18. And it reads, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Thanks be unto God for the reading and the hearing of God's word. In 2005, I had the pleasure of visiting Israel for a seminary class. One of the first statues that we saw was in the garden of a ruined Roman theater. It was of Jesus as the good shepherd carrying a lamb on his shoulder. The good shepherd is one of the most familiar images of Jesus. The Christian church has traditionally observed the fourth Sunday of Easter as Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus used Hebrew scriptures and his own words before his crucifixion to explain to Cleophas and his companion on their walk to Emmaus and to instruct his disciples on the night after his resurrection that his sacrificial death was no accident. He is indeed God's good shepherd and also the lamb of God who lays down his life for the sheep. We've been talking about Easter and today we shift from the post-resurrection appearances uh, of Jesus to the nature of God's work in the world. In his conversation, Jesus would have shared uh, Psalm 23 in which God provides the sheep with all that is needed. The Gospel of John moves from Old Testament imagery to the wonderful assurance that we find in Jesus as our shepherd. The Easter message is that Jesus returns to us and will never let us go. Our assurance is based on not on what we do or and do not do, but on what Jesus does in his role as the good shepherd. So what does such language really signify? What is a 
modern person like you and me to make of such a passage. You know, we can get lost in the pleasant reverie about white fleecy sheep who were uh, bouncing around on green hillsides. A friend of commentator Nancy Blakely came back from a trip of, to Scotland and Ireland and spoke of all the pictures that she had taken of the striking uh, countryside. But she discovered when she compared them that there were sheep in almost every one of them. Yet how often do you and I see sheep on our way to work? We often speak of a congregation as a flock, but such imagery is almost absent from our daily experience. Have we romanticized the image of Jesus as the good shepherd due to our unfamiliarity with shepherding? You see, the life of a shepherd was anything but picturesque. It was dangerous. It was risky and it's menial. Shepherds were rough around the edges, spending time in the fields rather than in polite society. For Jesus to say, I am the good shepherd, would have been an affront to the religious elite and educated. The claim has an edge on it. A modern day equivalent might be for Jesus to say, I'm a good immigrant worker or maybe a good food service worker. They were not highly valued in their community. But the image of the shepherd reminds us that God is especially concerned for those at risk, those who are vulnerable. Sheep are lost without the constant vigilant care of their shepherd. We don't mind Jesus calling himself a shepherd, but we don't want to be called a sheep. Some of us bristle at the idea of being thought of as a dumb and mindless animal. In her sermon, The Voice of the Shepherd, Barbara Brown Taylor tells of an acquaintance who had actually grown up on a sheep ranch. Uh, much like uh, Vern Jungle's daughter who lives in Mesick. And she could dispel the myth that sheep are dumb. It was actually the cattle ranchers who started that rumor because sheep do not behave like cows. You see, cows are herded from the rear with shouts and prods from the cowboys. But that doesn't work for sheep. If you stand behind sheep making noises, they will just run around behind you. They actually prefer to be led. You see, cows can be pushed, but sheep must be led. Sheep will not go anywhere that someone else, their trusted shepherd, does not go to show them that everything is all right. Sheep seem to consider their shepherds a part of the family and the relationship that grows up between the two is quite exclusive. They develop a language of their own that outsiders are not privy to. The shepherd's voice is key. As Jesus says in this passage, I know my own and my own know me. Not only that, but Jesus gives his very life for the sheep. The shepherd intentionally becomes the sacrificial lamb. As Isaiah foretold, like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. And yet Jesus makes it clear that he gives his life willingly, 
No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Herein is the power of Easter resurrection. This message that gives us hope. Sometimes you and I go astray, just like sheep. Sheep that are ill, I hear, may follow the voice of a stranger. And sheep wander off and fall into ravines. There are many voices out there vying for our attention. Many distractions lure us from the path. Jesus promises that he will never let us go. His voice will bring us back. We belong to him. This is a strong word of reassurance for us in our struggles to be faithful. In our choices each day as we practice our faith by saying yes to some voices and saying no to others. You see, Jesus is there going before us, leading us. You see, Jesus seeks out the lost, those in need of being rescued, who are often the forgotten in our society. Lowly shepherds, keeping watch over their flock at night, were the first to hear the news of the birth of the Savior. Yes, the kings, those wise ones, came later. And the fact that they were Gentile point to the words Jesus speaks about other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, Jesus said, and they will listen to my voice. The relationship between the sheep and the shepherd is based on what the shepherd does rather than what the sheep do. It's all about who the shepherd is rather than who we are. The sheep feel secure just to hear the voice of the shepherd. Through that reassurance, we in turn may allow the shepherd's voice to speak through us as we reach out to the lost and hurting that we encounter on the way. And Jesus probably pointed his disciples to Ezekiel 34, where God promises both to be the shepherd and to set a model shepherd over the people. The good shepherd's task is to feed the sheep adequately, care for their ailments, keep them gathered together and put their well-being before his own. When Jesus says he is the good shepherd, he makes quite a radical statement. He is the good shepherd, the one who is ordered and sound and noble and ideal. He's the model. He's true, competent faithful, and praiseworthy. You see, Jesus is not just any run-of-the-mill shepherd. He embodies strength, power, sympathy, kindness, and mercy. Jesus assumes the duty of the shepherd, God's redemptive work in the world. His very life and work is an act of obedience to God. No sacrifice is too great for the sheep. Even the shepherd's very life is available to further God's purposes. The good shepherd does not merely care for the sheep, but also gathers on the flock. You see, those who see and hear and believe in Jesus, belong to the flock. Thus, the door is wide open to the outcasts of his day 
and our day. Sinners and lepers and women and Samaritans and tax collectors and the list goes on. In our day, maybe it is the homeless, uh, the minority community, those who are living in poverty, those who are food insecure. Jesus is concerned for the individual welfare of each sheep and knows each of us by name. Jesus gives us intimacy and security. Jesus, our shepherd, is sufficient for the care of the flock. The shepherd and the sheep know each other. It's interesting, we all long and hunger to know and to be known. We even create virtual communities on the internet and in chat rooms, forming authentic and holistic community, though it's hard work. We dole out parts of ourselves in stingy bits and pieces. We avoid being vulnerable with each other. We hold back our feelings and our thoughts. And so often we are afraid to confront each other, judge each other without mercy. And we hold grudges. We set impossibly high standards for ourselves and each other. Our good intentions are often misunderstood and rejected. And we avoid commitments because we do not want to risk exploitation or abuse. We have a difficult time trusting each other. So how can we form community that is real and life-giving under the auspices of our Good Shepherd? Jesus assures us that our fears are real and that there are alternatives. Our scripture speaks of dangers and protection. Our emptiness and anxiety can be relieved because we have one who knows us and cares for us and is willing to die for us and is our constant companion. He is the good shepherd. You see, God's flock is open and inclusive. Jesus not doesn't exclude people based on the standards of his day or our day. It's not about status or who your parents were or your physical condition or disability. Many in Jesus' day were afraid of being excommunicated from the community because they believed in Jesus. We don't have that fear. You see, Jesus was more than a wonder worker. He embraced the outcast, the oppressed, and the overlooked. Jesus' call for one flock and one shepherd is clear. And John makes it clear that the work of gathering the flock belongs to Jesus and God. We are to provide a space where all are welcome. The community that John envisioned is open and celebrates its diversity as gifts from God. We're all in need of new life and community offered because of Jesus's crucifixion and resurrection. So imagine with me, what would it mean to us to surrender ourselves to the care of God's good shepherd? The good shepherd is a powerful image for us us who hunger for connection in society that values individualism and secularism. 
in our moments of loneliness, isolation, alienation, and hopelessness, the Good Shepherd responds to our deepest yearnings for community by offering us an alternative separation and insecurity. We can have trust in the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters believe the good news of God's abounding love in Jesus Christ. By confessing faith in Christ and being baptized into his church, we are given new life. Through faith and baptism, we receive a new identity, life in the spirit. So we invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Commit yourself to his ways through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for Easter and the story of the resurrection. Thank you for giving to the world Jesus, the good shepherd, who gives us intimacy and security and gives us your in, unending love and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your good news that makes us children of yours. Thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit that equip us to be partners in mission and ministry. Lord, we ask you to teach us to trust and depend on you. Teach us to show love and concern for the other sheep in your flock in the things we say and do. Lord, we ask for your protection and your guidance and your forgiveness. Replace our fear with faith and courage. Replace our sickness with your healing. Replace our anxiety with your joy and your peace and your hope and your love. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Now my brothers and sisters go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of us. Amen and amen.